Good morning. This is Reverend Deb Hansen from the First United Methodist Church, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and we welcome you to this service of worship. And maybe you're wondering what this is all about. Well, stay tuned. You'll find out. Let us worship. Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. What do you have that belongs to God? What do you do with what belongs to him? There was a man. He was just a man, a man's man, a man like any other man. Who was very rich. That guy was loaded. I mean, money was coming out of his ears. Right. The man had to go on a journey. A long, strenuous journey, many, many miles away. Probably would take him days, no months, no years. Can we get on with this? I just want them to get it. Do you get it? They, they get got it. it. That's all I wanted. Anyway, the rich man had to leave behind his wealth, so he left it to be cared for by three servants. Uh, that's kind of dumb, don't you think? I mean, leaving your stuff with a help? Well, maybe they were trustworthy. Hi, yikes. The wealthy man said to his first servant, I'm leaving you with ten talents. Ten what? Talents. A talent is worth uh, maybe a thousand dollars. Wait, 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 you mean the wealthy guy left this guy ten Talent of whatever you call them? Talents. Uh, yeah. yeah, those 10, well, that's like $10,000. You figure that out all by yourself. Very funny. To the second service, servant, he left five talents. That's $5,000. And to the third servant, he left one talent. That's a thousand dollars. Oh, good job. Uh huh. <laughs> now the first servant took his ten and made ten thousand dollars more. The investments were really good back then. You're telling me. The second service servant also doubled his money, making five thousand dollars more. And the third servant? The last servant buried his money. He hid it? secretly concealed it, and then after a long time, oh, 
I don't know. You don't know much. Well, the Bible doesn't say. Oh, okay. After a long time, the man returned home and inquired about his money. The first servant handed over 10,000 plus 10,000 more. And the second service servant handed over 5,000 plus 5,000 more. And the man was very pleased. Hey, I would have been too. But the third servant gave back nothing but his $1,000 and excuses. Well, I was, a, I was afraid of you and, and you're such a hard man. I don't think you're a very fair master. Well, well, oh, oh you're good at that whining stuff. <laughs> and the man was very upset with the servant. So he threw him out and he gave the cash to the first servant. You're out of here, baby. What do you have that belongs to God? What do you do with what belongs to him? Maybe you write and sing songs. Do you encourage your friends? Maybe you cook. Maybe you've got money or stuff to share. Could be you got a set of wheels. You're good at sports. Have a great personality. God has given good and perfect gifts, gifts to the likes of these. And he's left them with you, the help. What will you do with it? Use it or lose it. If you use it for God, God will bless it. If you don't, you can't. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? Nope. Nope. I'm, I'm going to let, let it shine. shine. I read a story of a woman who had finished her shopping and returned to her car to find four men sitting inside it. She dropped her shopping bags and drew a handgun from her purse and with a forceful voice said, I have a gun and I know how to use it. Get out of the car. Now those men did not wait for a second invitation. They got out and ran like crazy. And the woman, understandably shaken, quickly loaded her shopping bags and got into the car. She just wanted to get out of there as fast as she could, but no matter how hard she tried, she could not get her key into the ignition. And then it hit her. This wasn't, this isn't my car, she thought. She looked and indeed her car was parked four or five spaces away. So she got out and looked around to see if the men were near loaded the bags into her own car and drove to the police station to turn herself in. The desk sergeant, after hearing her story, nearly fell out of his chair laughing. He pointed to the other end of the counter where four men were reporting a carjacking by a woman with glasses and curly white hair and less than five feet tall, carrying a large handgun. No charges were filed. Now, I'm taller than five feet, so you know that wasn't me. She thought it was her car, but it really belonged to someone else. And there's a lesson for us in this too. The truth is God owns everything. God owns that lady's car and the one she mistakenly got into. God owns everything that we call ours. God owns it all. God owns everything. We don't own anything. However, God has given us many things, many gifts to use and trusts us to take care of them and to use them and to share them so that we can make a difference in our world. We have a choice to either increase or just diminish what we've been given. And guess what? God wants us to grow and to build on the gifts we have. In Genesis 1:28, God blessed Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living creature, every living thing that moves upon the earth. God gave humanity dominion over everything, not domination, but dominion. That means being a caretaker, being a steward or a manager. A steward is someone who assumes a responsibility and receives the authority from God to manage money, time, and treasures, and other resources. Being a good steward of what God has given us includes caring for ourselves in our own spiritual lives, caring for others in our relationships and our relationship with God, 
and taking care of ourselves health-wise. In Matthew 22, 37 through 40, Jesus gives us the great commandment, the greatest and the second commandment of living as God's children. We are to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and our neighbor as ourselves. We are given the gift of life, of relationship with God, with others, and with ourselves. Stewardship puts God first and extends to others, even, even us, even ourselves. So we are responsible for ourselves, for our possessions, our time, and our abilities. How do we manage them? Where are we called to use them to glorify God? We have choices about how we will invest our time, talents, and treasures. How do we use them to build God's kingdom here on earth? The parable of the talents, so we heard, just heard a dialogue based on that parable in Matthew 25, 14 through 30, reminds us that the gifts we have aren't ours, but we are asked to manage them, to take care of them, to be stewards. It doesn't matter how large or small the amount, how we manage is what matters, and it's how we manage what we've been given. Maybe God has given us the gift of music or teaching, praying or caring for others, writing or building, or any number of gifts, and maybe we have made lots of money, or maybe we barely get along. We give what we can from what we have. There was a story I heard about Mother Teresa, who had taken some rice to poor families who had nothing. And at one home, she gave the family a small bag of rice, and they immediately opened it, divided it in half, and took the rest of it, took the other half over to the neighbors next door, and they explained that their neighbors had nothing, and they wanted to share in order to help them, too. Out of their poverty, they received a blessing and then shared it with someone else. When I was serving as a director of music years ago, I was in charge of a children's choir, and the accompanist was very good. She was a great accompanist. She played the piano well, and she donated her time to play for the children's choir. And although she didn't have a lot of money, she said this was her stewardship. She could give of her time and her gift of music, and she gave it abundantly with dedication, love, and joy. God is the owner. We are the managers. We don't own it. In a materialistic world like ours, it's easy to forget that God owns everything. God has created us and given us gifts in order to use them so that we can make the world a better place and bring the presence of God to others through the ways in which we invest our gifts. When the owner in the parable of the talents gave out gifts, he expected the servants to invest what he, they had been given. These represent that, 10, 5, and 1. One received 10 talents, one received 5, and the third servant received 1 talent. We have an opportunity to invest our gifts. If you were given a bag with money in it, how would you invest it? This week we begin a challenge to spend the summer investing our time, talents, and treasures to support the mission and ministry of First United Methodist Church. Or if you don't live in our area and it, you could always do it with another church. More information will be mailed this, new, this week with a surprise in one of these bags. We have a target date to reopen our building on September 12th and we will celebrate the gifts we have multiplied and receive pledges as to how we will continue to grow our time, talents, and treasures. God owns everything. We are the managers. Let's see how we can live out this parable in, modern day, in a modern day set, setting. Whether we have a bag or not, we can all figure out a way to multiply the gifts that God has given us by using them to make a difference. How that looks for each one of us will be different because God has given each one of us different gifts and different talents. So we have a choice. We can use our gifts and grow them or we can bury them. May we be blessed as we make our choices. God asks us to grow them. So let's be creative and find ways to make a difference as we use our time, talents, and treasure. Amen.
today's prayer for the gifts you have given us. Generous God, we are truly grateful. Yet, there are times when we fail to share them in order to further your kingdom here on earth. Sometimes we feel that our gifts are too small or we fail to invest the time to use them. Help us to remember that you gave us these gifts, not to hoard them or hold them back, but to share them so that your love spreads even wider and farther than we could have ever imagined. Open our minds, our eyes, and our hearts to recognize our gifts and follow your guidance in using them, generously and wisely, as we seek to glorify you. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. abundant unless you make the choice to bury them which choice will you make God would ask us to share may you go in peace and serve the Lord Amen <laughs> 